Okay, welcome everyone to the Judiciary Committee hearing, uh, DM, two DM sessions this morning. My name is Carl Rhodes, I'm the chair of the committee. Uh, this Zoom meeting and the YouTube live stream event will include the following agenda, the 1040 AM JDC agenda for DMing bills that we heard last Friday on the 19th, and the 945 JDC agenda, which is DM only for bills that crossed over or came over after lateral. Members of the committee uh, are Vice Chair Jarrett Keokalole, um, Senator Laura Acasio, Senator Mike Gabbard, Senator Chris Lee, Senator Donna Mercado Kim, and Senator Kurt Ravella. This meeting, including the audio and video of remote participants, is being, well, we won't have any remote participants today, is being streamed live on YouTube. You will find links to viewing options for all Senate meetings on the live and on demand video page of the legislature's website. In the unlikely event that we have to abruptly end this hearing due to major technical difficulties, the committee will reconvene to finish up any voting uh, on Thursday, February 24th at 9.25 a.m. That will be by video conference and a public notice will be posted on the legislature's website. Um, I believe that's it. So members, um, unless there are specific bills that you feel we need to discuss privately, um, I'm just going to go straight into DM, and if that's okay with everybody, we'll, we'll get started. Okay. Uh, first up on today's, on the, on the 940 agenda is uh, SB 160. This would change the deadline to file nomination papers for public office from the first Tuesday in June to the first Tuesday in May for certain elections. Uh, I'm going to defer this. My initial understanding was that we had not moved up the filing deadline when we moved the primary from September to August, but we did in fact, and I think it might actually be good to move it up a week or two, but, but I do think we need to leave neighbor island members a little bit of time after session to get their signatures and stuff because they tend to get tied up up here. And I just don't know if it's worth the trouble to change it by a week or two. So I'm going to defer it for now. I'm going to defer it and we'll move on to the next bill. Uh, SB 412 is the next one relating to operating the vehicle under the influence of an intoxicant. Uh, this excludes habitually operating a vehicle under the influence of an intoxicant from qualifying for deferred acceptance of guilty plea or noble contender plea. Our recommendation on 412 is to pass as is. Uh, so Senator Kio Kalili, uh, Looks like you're in your office today. So, so one of my staff will be coming up to get um, vote sheets from you if that's okay. Yes. Okay. Members, questions or concerns on this one, 4112? If not, Senator K. Okololi. Members, voting on SB 4, uh, 412, the recommendation is to pass this measure on amended. Chair Rhodes? Aye. Vice Chair goes aye. Senator Ocasio? Aye. Senator Gabbard? Aye. Senator Kim? Aye. Senator Lee? Aye. Senator Favela? Aye. Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thanks, members. Next is SB 421. This amends the manner in which a vacancy and the membership of the Senate is filled and, certain t and changes certain time frames. Uh, I think it, the way the, the new uh, paradigm they have set up here, I think, makes lots of sense and avoids some of the problems that we've had in the past. So recommendation is to pass with just technical amendments. Questions, concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Members voting on SB 421, the recommendation is to pass with amendments. Uh, noting all members present, are there any reservations? Any opposition? Seeing none, Chair, all members vote aye. Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next is SB 528. This requires printed and electronic political advertising to prominently display candidate approval, approval language on each page and increases the fines for violations. So recommendation in this one is to pass, but with some amendments. Um, we'll, we'll leave the fine the same per the Campaign Spending Commission's testimony, the same as it is now, and both the fine and the maximum. But we'll, and we'll, but we'll require the disclaimer only on odd numbered pages. So 13579. That way we will only have a disclaimer on one side of a, of a postcard or a mailer like that. And we'll also put in the, uh, the committee report uh, some concerns that Senator Kim has raised about, you know, what about a cookbook uh, that probably doesn't need a disclaimer all the way through? I, I don't have an elegant way to. Um, 
make that distinction at this point. So I would just ask that we move the bill on it for the, for the time being, and we'll try to work that out later. Questions or concerns? I just saw yeah, Chair, oh, Sorry, go ahead. Senator Kim first and Senator uh, Carol Kaloli. Yeah, just a comment. Hopefully, if it moves forward, maybe we can look at it to distinguishing whether it's a media, multi-page media piece uh, that's not connected or something to that matter. And then when you say odd number of pages, what's so happened on a double-sided, which is the odd and which is the even, and will somebody, you know, get you because you put it on even pages instead of odd pages or something. So, I mean, yeah, I'm just trying to be realistic about uh, how these kinds of little nuances uh, affect us. So as it go forward, hopefully we can figure that out. Okay, we'll, we'll do, we'll, we'll work on that. Uh, Senator Keo Kaloli. Yes, in concern, I yield to Senator Lee. Oh, Senator Lee. Oh, no, sorry, I had nothing. Okay, okay. Any, any other uh, questions, concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Members voting on SB 528, the Chair's recommendation is to pass this measure with amendments. Noting the presence of all members, are there any reservations? I have reservations. Reservations for Senator Ocasio. Any opposition? Seeing none, Chair, all other members vote aye. Recommendation adopted. Okay, thank you very much. SB 635 is next, allows the Elections Commission to refer a complaint to the Attorney General or County Prosecutor in addition to any administrative determination and without the requirement that the Commission believes the respondent was recklessly, had recklessly, knowingly, or intentionally committed a violation. Um, also disqualifies a person convicted of violating election criminal prosecution laws from holding elective office for 10 years rather than the current four and repeals language stipulating that elections criminal prosecution law does not apply to any person who has paid or agrees to pay an administrative fine. Uh, recommendation on this one is to go ahead and pass it as is. Questions or concerns? Uh, I have concerns. Um, it seems like um, double jeopardy kind of thing for a single violation. Um, and the I'm unclear as to why it went from four years to 10 years as a, a suspension and don't see that as necessarily uh, as, as necessary. So, so to respond to the double jeopardy, there's many offenses that have both administer that have both civil and criminal uh, penalties. So that part of it is not unique by any stretch. The other four to 10, I, mean, I don't know if there's any magic number in 10, but I think there was some feeling that the, if you're going to, if you're actually, gonna, if you actually are convicted of a crime related to elections that you need to sit out for more than four years, but yeah, it's, I guess it's essentially arbitrary. Any other, any other questions, concerns? If not, uh, Vice Chair. Members voting on SB 635, the recommendation is to pass uh, with amendments, right? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, wait a, minute, wait a minute, stop, no, no, sorry. Without amendments, no amendments, sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, excuse me, let's start over. Members were voting on SB 635. The recommendation is to pass this measure unamended. Uh, of all, uh, noting all members present, any reservation? Okay, any opposition? I vote no, thank you. No vote for Senator Ocasio. Any other reservations or opposition? Chair, all of the members vote aye, recommendation adopted. Thank you, next up is SB 738. This removes psilocybin and psilocin from the list of schedule one substances requires the Department of Health to establish designated treatment centers for the therapeutic administration of these two uh, substances. Um, I'm glad we had the hearing. I think there may be, in the future, there may be some um, uh, some use in passing the bill, but for the time being, I'm going to defer it. Uh, SB 157 is next, relating to licensing, authorizes the issuance of a civil license to solemnize marriages and allows solemnization by any, any individual at least 18 years of age. On 157, recommendations to pass as is. Questions, concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Members voting on SB 157, the recommendation is to pass this measure unamended. Noting the presence of all members, are there any reservations? Any opposition? Seeing none, Chair, all members vote aye. Recommendation adopted. Thank you very much. Next up is SB 159. This is the um, motor voter, a motor voter bill. Requires any person who is eligible to vote and applies for a motor vehicle 
driver's license or identification card to be automatically registered to vote unless they um, affirmatively opt out. A recommendation on this one is to pass with some amendments. Let me find the amendments. Okay. Uh, we'll add a direction that the examiner or driver shall not transmit information related to voter application if the applicant presents a document that demonstrates lack of US citizenship. We'll add a requirement that the examiner or drivers provide information to applicants about the address confidentiality program. As requested by DOT, we'll clarify that the database is containing driver's license and ID card information be accessible instead of directly accessible to election officials and the online voter registration system. As requested by DOT, we'll delete unnecessary language that instructs the examiner or drivers to not electronically transmit any information that the applicant affirmatively declined to be transmitted as the applicant can decline to be registered to vote or have their registration information updated. And we'll clarify in several places that the information to be transmitted or not be transmitted as the situation requires applies to both voter registration information and changes or updates to registered voters uh, information. And there's some technical amendments as well. <coughs> Questions, concerns? If not, Senator Keokaloli. Members voting on SB 159. The recommendation is to pass this measure with amendments. Noting all members present, are there any no's or reservations? Reservation. Reservations for Senator Favela. Any other members with opposition or reservations? Seeing none, Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. Next up is SB 189 relating to dog bites. It removes the requirement to prove that the dog has bitten on two separate occasions for a dog bite victim to bring legal action against a dog's owner. Um, recommendation here is to pass with just technical amendments. And I would just note for the uh, committee's edif edification that the, the, this is about the, the, the two bite rule Right now, if, if the dog has not bitten twice, the judge cannot order it to be put down. And with this, if we pass this bill, the judge at their discretion would be able to put them down. They wouldn't be required to, but depending on the first bite, that might be something that a judge would want to do. Uh, it just depends on what the situation is. Anyway, that's, it does, but it doesn't require it. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Text. Uh, text with amendments. Uh, members voting on SB 189, the recommendation is to pass with amendments. Uh, noting all members present, are there any reservations? Any opposition? Seeing none, Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Okay, thank you. Next, moving on to SB 278, prohibiting the micro targeting of political advertisements on television and social media. I, I think that, that micro targeting is a it allows unscrupulous uh, political, political candidates to say, uh, to tell one group of people one thing and tell group, another group of people another thing with alarming accuracy. Um, but I don't think this bill's ready to go, so I'm gonna defer it. And it's always easier to defer your own bills and other people's bills. Anyway. So I believe that's it for the first agenda. Staff, is that right? Do, I get them, do we get them all? That's it. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, let's see what time is it. Yep, we're we're uh, we can move on to the other the nine forty five agenda. Uh, this bill this agenda starts with SB thirty five prohibits landlords. I'm sorry. Let me move up. Hang on a second. Prohibits landlords from recovering possession of a dwelling unit from uh, tenants if li habitability of the premises is significantly impaired, sets a tenant's liability for rent if habitability of the premises is, is significantly impaired, impaired. And it does have a bad date, 7-1-20, well, sort of a bad date, 7-1-21-20. Uh, oh yes, it's actually a very bad date. Yes, it's a bad date, Never mind. <laughs> sorry. Uh, recommendation on SB 35 is to pass as is. Questions or concerns? If not, Senator Kiro Kaloli. Members voting on SB 35, the rec uh, SD1, the recommendation is to pass unamended. Uh, are there any 
Reservations or opposition? Reservations. Reservations for Senator Gabbard. Members, any other reservations or opposition? Um, I have a reservation as well. Okay. All right, uh, noting the reservations of Senators Kim and Gabbard, Chair, uh, all of the members vote aye, your recommendation is adopted. Yeah, thank you very much. Next up is SB 36, prohibits discrimination, including in advertisements for available real property based on participation in a housing assistance program, uh, establishes the landlord incentive program, special fund to reimburse landowners who participate in the Section 8 housing voucher program. Um, so recommendation on SB 36 is to go ahead and pass with some amendments. Um, because of the referral, uh, I'm going to take out the special fund for landlords and appropriations. I mean, the, first, for the special fund for landlords and the appropriation, and we'll add committee language that requests that future committees that may want to consider the wisdom of creating a special fund. And let's go ahead and put a, a bad date on it to May 6, 2137. Questions or concerns? If not, sir, Carol Kaloli. Members voting on SB 36, SD1, the recommendation is to pass this measure with amendments. Uh, are there any reservations? Any opposition? Seeing none, Chair, all members vote aye, recommendation adopted. Thank you very much. SB 48 is next, includes coercion as a means of committing the offense of sex trafficking, designates solicitation of a minor for prostitution prostitution as a form of sex trafficking repeals the offense of solicitation of a minor for prostitution. Um, I, I'm going to defer this. Uh, the previous chair and I have pretty fundamental differences about what to do with this bill, so I'm going to defer it for now. Uh, next up is uh, SB 387 relating to the room confinement of children of, at detention and shelter facilities. It establishes conditions and time limits for placing a child in room confinement at a detention or shelter facility. And it has a, a delayed effective date. A recommendation on SB 387 is to pass as is. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Members voting on SB 387 SD1, the Chair's recommendation is to pass uh, as is. As is. Uh, noting all members present, any no's or reservations? Seeing none, Chair, recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next up is SB 40, exempts from income restrictions for sale housing projects that are built for qualified residents, residents who will be owner occupants in perpetuity and who own no other property in Hawaii. Um, the recommendation is to go ahead and move it ahead, but I, I'm I want to put a defective date on it, May 6, 2137, and um, we'll see how where it goes. It's a fairly fundamental change in the way we deal with our housing shortage, but I would like to um, let it be explored a little further anyway. Questions or concerns? Um, Chair, I have a concern. <clears throat> My concern with this um, this bill, I, I think I did email you about this one, is that um, it's. Uh, I would like to amend uh, recommend an amendment to say that according, uh, I'm sorry, that the, the developer shall comply with HRS 6E for the burial and EV safeguards rather than to exempt, exempt that or specifically state in there that that is not an exemption. Does that make sense? Um, I'm, I won't quibble with you about the policy point, but the problem, the, the issue for me as a chair of the, the second committee is that I would have to get prior concurrence to do it. So, okay. I, yeah. Sorry. I but at least um, for me, that's, that is we, my we concern. Can, we, we can put that uh, um, staff, can put that concern in the uh, committee report to have the, uh, if, if another committee, if another, if it gets to the house and another chair looks at it, then please consider that um, the issue that Senator Ocasio has raised. Thank you. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. Any other any other questions or comments? If not, Vice Chair. Members voting on SB 40, SB 1, the recommendation is to pass this measure with amendments. Noting the presence of all members of the committee, are there any members with reservations? Reservations. Reservations for Senator Ocasio. 
Reservations? Reservations for Senator Favela. Are there any uh, members voting no? Seeing none, Chair, all other members vote aye. Recommendation adopted. Thank you, members. Moving on to SB 410, relating to abuse of a family or household member, adds abuse of a family or household member to those felonies that qualify for repeat offender sentencing. Uh, recommendation is to pass as is. Questions, concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Um, is this 410? 410. Um, can you go and make an amendment for that? We just got a prosecutor's request in. I put it in the outline. Um, okay, we'll, we'll, do, we'll, put, we'll put a bad date on it and worry about it later. I don't think we can handle it right now. Um, bad date would be May 6, 2137. So with amendments instead of as is. Any comments, questions, concerns? If not, Sir Kiel Kaloli. Members voting on SB 410, SB 1, the recommendation is to pass this measure with amendments. Uh, noting all members present, are there any reservations? Reservations. Reservations for Senator Acasio. Any other reservations? Any opposition? Seeing none, Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you very much. Next up is SB 510 relating to historic preservation reviews, authorizes the Department of Land and Natural Resources in consultation with the Office of Hawaiian Affairs to get, delegate to the impacted counties the responsibility for certain historic preservation projects reviews, provided that certain requirements are met, um, allows the Department of Land and Natural Resources to establish a program to certify third party individuals and organizations to review, do, review documents for completeness and compliance prior to submission of those documents to the par department provided that certain conditions are met. Uh, recommendation here is to pass as is. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Members voting on SB 510 SD1, the Chair's recommendation is to pass this unamended. Noting all members present, are there any no's or reservations? Seeing none, Chair, all members vote aye. Recommendation adopted. Thank you very much. Next bill is SB 576. Uh, this is having to do with catalytic converters. Um, this is an issue that's been kicking around for a while and um, I would like to de defer decision-making further until Wednesday, March 3 at 10.25 a.m. by vid via video conference. So Wednesday, March 3 at 10.25. I think we have language from a previous year that is, I think it's better, but we'll take a look. Moving on to SB 582, this amends the definition of water pollutant as used in chapter 342D relating to water pollution to include plastic. Uh, recommendation here is to pass with text and a bad date, May 6, 2137. And that's it. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Members voting on SB 582, SD1. The Chair's recommendation is to pass with amendments. Uh, members, are there any reservations or opposition? Seeing none, Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. Next is SB 596 relating to why Tourism Authority prohibits all over board members of the HTA from holding office beyond the commencement of the next legislative session following the expiration of the member's term of office. The recommendation on this one is to pass as is. Questions, concerns? If not, Senator Kao Kaloli. Members voting on SB 596 SD1, the recommendation is to pass this measure unamended. Uh, members, are there any reservations? Any opposition? Chair recommendation adopted. Thanks very much. SB 601, this prohibits roofing contractors from pay, offering to pay in any monetary form and insureds, insurance deductible as an incentive to encourage the insured to hire the contractor allows insurers to rescind contracts with roofing contractors within five business days or receiving notification from an insurer that all are part of a claim or contract is not a covered loss under the insured's insurance policy. A uh, recommendation on 601 is to pass as is. Questions, concerns? Seeing on Vice Chair. Members, SB 601, SD1, passing unamended. Uh, noting all members present, are there any reservations? Any opposition? Uh, reservations, please. 
Reservations for Senator Kim. Any other members with reservations or opposition? Seeing none, Chair, all other members vote aye. Recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next up is SB 607. This removes the construction completion deadline for the Le Ali'i affordable housing project and Keave Street Apartments exempts the project from the application of the historic preservation provisions of chapter 6E. Our recommendation here is to pass with some amendments with an amendment. An amendment. Um, we'll make, the amendment will make it so that the, the uh, Keave Street apartment complex exempt I'm sorry, and that's not that's not well said. Um, it will make it so that the exemption from 6E applies only to the Kiave Street apartment project footprint itself, not the entire villages of Leali. Questions or concerns? I'm I'm curious as to why just the Kiave Street as opposed to the whole. Because the uh, my understanding is the Kiave Street apartment project itself is. They, they don't own the whole, they're, they're not doing the whole thing that we're just, but the way the bill was written before they were required to do the, you know, the AIS for the whole thing, even though they weren't building on the whole thing. And um, is the house, do you, are you aware if the house exempted the whole property and not just Calvary Street? The house, I mean, is in the house, there's a house bill? I don't know. House bill and they exempted, they removed the exemption. Um, I, my understanding is they removed it completely so that the EV know. burial, the EV burial is uh, is covered under the law. I mean, there's some history here. I think the uh, let's see if I got in my notes. And my under I don't know staff. Let's see whose bill is this. Uh, Eileen, do you know was was there already an AIS done on this on this parcel? And this and normally because of the time delay, you'd have to do it again. Yes, that's the issue. So this yes. is exempting from doing it again, correct? Yeah, that's okay. correct. So that's that's I believe that's what happened there. So it depends if there was findings of significant impact as well, too. Yeah, okay. and I don't I don't know the history in that yep. detail to know whether okay. that or not. Thank you. Any other concerns or questions? If not, Vice Chair. Members voting on SB 607 SD1. The Chair's recommendation is to pass this measure with amendments. Uh, noting all members present, are there any reservations? Okay, Hi, are there no. any members vote? Sorry. Okay, no, no vote for Senator Ocasio. Any yes. other opposition? No vote for me. Okay, we have no votes for Senators Favela and Ocasio. Any other members with reservations or opposition? Okay, seeing none, Chair, recommendation adopted. Okay, thank you. Moving on to SB 696 relating to the Festival of Pacific Arts extends the date in which the Temporary Commission on the 13th Festival of Pacific Arts shall cease to exist to August 31, 2025. Uh, permits less than a quorum of commission members to discuss matters relating to official business outside a commission meeting as a permitted interaction under Chapter 92 and provided that the commission holds a meeting at least once a month and discusses the progress of the permitted interaction matter at the next meeting. Uh, recommendation here is to pass as is. Questions, concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Members voting on SB 696 SD1. The recommendation is to pass this measure unamended. Uh, noting all members present, are there any reservations? Any opposition? Chair recommendation adopted. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to SB 744. This repeals the authorization for the governor to negotiate with any person for the development or expansion of private correctional facilities, prohibits the establishment of private correctional facilities in the state. Um, recommendation is to pass with the uh, delayed effective date, May 6, 2137. Um, but I, I would like to move it on if can. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Members voting on SB 744, the recommendation is to pass with amendments. Um, noting the presence of all members, are there any reservations? Reservations. Reservations for Senator Kim. Any other reservations or opposition? Seeing none, Chair, your recommendation is adopted. 
Thank you, members. Uh, next up is SB 866, temporarily exempts affordable housing projects from specific state and county fees and exactions related to discretionary approval or ministerial permitting except application fees, provides that the provided that the units are exclusively for qualified residents who are owner, renter, occupants, and own no other real property. Uh, recommendation on SB 866, SD1 is to put a delayed effective date, May 6, 2137. And that's it. Any questions or concerns? Uh, Chair, I have the same similar um, ask if you could put in the committee report my concerns about that I had similar to 48, um, Senate Bill 48, which was to specifically amend the language to state that this does not exempt developments from EIS and burial laws. Okay, we'll note that in the committee report. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions or concerns? Seeing none, Vice Chair. Uh, members voting on SB 866 SD1. Uh, this is with amendments. That's right. Amendments. Yeah, the chair's recommendation is to pass this measure with amendments. Noting all members present, are there any reservations or opposition? Reservations. Reservations for Senator Acasio. Reservations. And, and reservations for Senator Favela. Any other no's or reservations? Seeing none, all, of them, all other members vote aye recommendation adopted. Okay, thank you. Next is SB 998 relating to the Honolulu Authority for Rapid Transit. This grants voting rights to members of the Board of Directors of the Honolulu Authority for Rapid Transit appointed by the President of the Senate or the Speaker of the House. Uh, recommendation here is to pass unamended. Questions, concerns? I have some concerns. Yes, go ahead. Um, you know, I think we've talked about this in the past. So I'm kind of surprised to see this. Um, the concern with not giving the members that was appointed by the House and the Senate a vote because we don't have, um, we would then be blamed when there are any kind of issues because they say you have a vote on the board. So, you know, the Senate can be blamed, the House can be blamed because we have a vote on the board. Um, and I think the fact that we don't have control over the, over the heart, I don't know that we want to have that kind of a responsibility relying on one member to cast a vote for something uh, of that nature that has been an issue. So anyway, that's kind of where I'm at on that. And I think we discussed that and one of the reasons why they got no vote to begin with, so. So I believe the problem right now, and the transportation chair can correct me if I'm wrong, but the, trans the, the problem right now is that the all the members are count are counted um, for quorum quorum purposes, but then only a certain number of them can vote, and then it, that number, if any of the voting members are absent, then they just can't vote at all. So that's that's the problem. Um, but to place that that reason on for those members, I mean, is it can say that if you don't have a vote, then you're not considered quorum, making quorum. I mean, that, I just don't but, know that I want to place, you know, what the representative from the Senate to, to vote on something that we never took up or we never voted on. And then we get blamed for whatever happens. That, that's, that's the extent of my knowledge um, on that. So that's... Um, so I don't know, Senator Lee, do you have any further comments or do you, is that, is that right? No, I think generally that is sort of the uh, part of the crux of the conversation. So there was um, some discussion about that in the transportation committee as the bill was moving along, but um, ultimately the committee felt that it's worth discussion. There were a number of bills that tried to address this different ways and this seemed like the cleanest way to, to move forward. But I understand the, the point that I think you're trying to raise. Is that a defective date? No, it's clean. Do you want me? Do we defect the date? Are you okay with defecting the date, Senator Lee? Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's okay. fine. We'll, we'll, put on a, we're put on a May 6, 2137. Okay, I'm still going to vote WR though, and not no. Okay. okay. All right. Any other comments or questions on this one? Yeah, I, I just, okay, so how does that work then? The, Effective date goes to the house, and then they change it as they want to. Or how does that work? They they can change it, but we'd we'd get to vote on it again because it would either it would go to conference or we would come back here and we'd have to accept their amendment. So that that's the that's the uh, the beauty of the defective date is we'll get to look at it again one way or the other. 
Okay. Anything else? If not, Vice Chair. Members voting on SB 998, the chair's recommendation is to pass this measure with amendments. With amendments. Uh, noting, all members, noting all members present, are there any reservations? Reservations for me, thank you. Reservations for Senator Kim. Any opposition? Seeing none, chair, recommendation adopted. Thank you. Next up is SB 1004, beginning with the 2021-2022 school year, requires the Department of Education to include the teaching of financial literacy and the personal slash transition plan requirement for each student. Uh, recommendation here is to pass as is. Questions or concerns? If not, Vice Chair. Members voting on SB 1004, the recommendation is to pass this measure unamended. Uh, noting all members present, are there any reservations? Any opposition? Seeing none, Chair, all members vote aye, recommendation adopted. Thank you very much. Next up is SB 1042. This repeals the provision that allows persons designated as covered offenders in another state or jurisdiction to peti petition the Attorney General for termination of registration requirements on demonstrating that the out-of-state convictions are not covered offenses in the state of Hawaii, requires certain long-term visitors to Hawaii with out-of-state convictions to register. That's the gist of it. Uh, recommendation here is to pass as is. Questions or concerns? Seeing none, Senator Keokaloli. Members, SB 1042, SB 1, the recommendation is to pass unamended. Are there any no's or reservations? Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members. Moving on to SB 1233, this establishes a two-year vendor facilities pilot program task force for vendors with serious mental illness within the Department of Health. Requires the vendor facility pilot program task force submit an annual report to the governor and legislature not less than 20 days prior to the convening of the 2022 through 2023 sessions. Um, it's in discussions with the, my, with the with vice chair, who's also the lead of sponsor of this bill. I, I'm going to go ahead and defer it. I do think that maybe over the summer there's some um, uh, changes we could make that would make it this acceptable to the blind community. But right now there's quite a lot of resistance to it from uh, members of the blind community. So I'm going to defer it. Um, next up is SB 2144 relating to modernization of criminal justice. Um, I'm going to defer this one too. We have another bill I'm planning to hear next week that is in this, it's the same topic. And I think it's a better bill. So um, we'll defer that one. Uh, Elena or Jesse, is that, do we get them all? Yes, we got them all. Okay, great. Uh, members, we do have yet more voting to do today, but not for a few minutes. Uh, we have a joint uh, DM with uh, WAM starting at 1030. And I believe that's on a different Zoom feed. So we'll all have to leave and come back at 1030. And then there's and then at 1035, there's a couple, a few more bills that are, or WAM is lead, WAM JDC, the first batch is JDC WAM. So see you in a few minutes. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you guys for everything.